Hello, good morning everyone. So my name is Helen Murphy and I work in our vendor solutions team at Bytes. So I just wanted to tell you a bit about Bytes and Sophos relationship before I hand over to Jonathan. So um, we are a platinum partner which is the highest level of partner status and that brings with it an extremely good relationship and a comprehensive understanding of Sophos solutions and people. Um, as a platinum partner we currently sit in the top five in overall in, in revenue terms and we provide the full portfolio of Sophos solutions from endpoint, mobile to network security. We have a dedicated license and technical team. Our services are provided through, through our ecosystem using our preferred service only partners. Um, and just before I hand over to Jonathan, I wanted to let you know that we have a deep knowledge and understanding of Microsoft. And following this webinar, we welcome the opportunity to help you understand and assess what your options are to transition from TMG. So thanks again, everyone. I'll just hand over to Jonathan now. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed. Yep, let me introduce myself. My name is John Hope. I'm Channel Manager at Sophos for the uh, UTM product line in the UK and Ireland. And I'm going to take you through uh, a quick summary of the Microsoft TMG product, uh, its current status, and uh, what we feel we can do to help out your organization as we move forward. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at Microsoft TMG. Um, I suspect that um, most of you are TMG users already, given that you're on this webinar. Um, so you'll probably already know that TMG basically comes as part of the uh, Microsoft Forefront range of products. And it has its origins back in the Microsoft ISA product, which has been around for, for many, many years uh, in various different guises. The TMG product is uh, basically a, a gateway security solution, and that offers uh, a firewall capability um, with additional services to add in things like web content filtering, IPS, um, remote access solutions via VPN technology, and also the reverse proxy functionality. Okay, so TMG is typically deployed at the gateway perimeter, and it's designed to sit in front of your internal network and also any web servers or access servers. Uh, that you're running on your network. Um, as you'd expect, given that it's a Microsoft product, not only is it available as a, um, as a full disk installation, as a dedicated server platform, but it's also possible to virtualize the solution uh, in Microsoft Hyper-V. Um, general feedback in the industry about things that TMG has been um, well accepted for is, first of all, the fact that it can be virtualized in Hyper-V, um, the fact that it has a firewall in there which is relatively simple to actually configure, um, that it has a, an integrated IPS engine, that it has some, some good integration with uh, Microsoft Exchange, as you'd expect for facilities like anti-spam, anti-malware. Um, the fact that it has good logging capabilities. The reporting, we have mixed feedback on the quality of the reporting, but certainly the logging capabilities are very, very good. Um, also the ability to, to scan um, for malicious content, particularly over things like HTTPS, which is typically quite difficult to do. One of the strong things that we've had very, very positive feedback about is the reverse proxy capability, and I'll touch on that in a little bit more depth later on, but um, it's certainly a product area that maybe there aren't that many um, devices and solutions out there in the marketplace addressing, and it's an area that we see an increasing level of interest for, from end users like yourselves, and not least because um, a huge number of websites are, are compromised every single day and um, they become part of this sort of continuous cycle of malware distribution. So in the order of 30,000 individual websites are compromised every day and about 80% of those are actually perfectly legitimate business websites that have just been hijacked and malware has been posted on those sites. So being able to reverse proxy and protect those assets is certainly a, a worthwhile exercise just to ensure that you basically don't become a part of the problem. So a few more strengths um, for, for TMG. First of all, it has a simple GUI, um, familiar Windows interface. It's designed to be easy to set up. And as you'd expect, it integrates well with the rest of the Microsoft um, platforms. So for example, strong integration with things like Active Directory for, for user accounts, good integration with Exchange and SharePoint. However, TMG is not without flaws. Um, it does have a limited depth and, and breadth of protection. And that's primarily because when it all is said and done, Microsoft is not a security 
uh, vendor. Um, so a, a good example of that is that uh, the IPS capabilities in, in TMG, they're only really looking for vulnerabilities inside Microsoft um, operating systems and platforms. They're not looking kind of holistically at the rest of the marketplace and, and considering what else customers might have on their network. Um, the management can be a little bit complicated, particularly if you've got multiple sites. There's no centralized management capability for something like TMG. Um, there's limited customization options. Microsoft has strived to make TMG simple to deploy, but maybe um, by oversimplifying it, they've removed some of the, the, the tweaks and, and bells and whistles that customers would have liked to individually customize the solution. Um, remote access is limited, um, so PPTP, L2TP are the primary methods of remote access. They're not really up to scratch these days um, in, in terms of uh, security and, and functionality. And as I already touched on, whilst the logging is considered to be very good in Microsoft TMG, it does typically offer some limited reporting capabilities. That said, TMG is basically now discontinued. It's, um, it's not a product that you can buy anymore. And for those of you who are using um, the TMG um, platform, it will no longer be supported by Microsoft as of April the 14th, 2014. So that leaves yourself and the rest of the industry basically looking for alternatives. And Sophos UTM really stands out as a great opportunity to, to drop the software solution into replace current TMG solutions and really replace the functionality that's already in TMG and also augment that functionality with, with some extra, extra functions. So what are Microsoft saying about this? Well, Microsoft acknowledged themselves that essentially the, the TMG product is um, a little bit of a unique uh, solution within the portfolio and, and given that it's now been withdrawn, they do acknowledge that uh, in a lot of circumstances customers will need to go outside of Microsoft to find a solution. They are in certain circumstances touting uh, Microsoft's UAG or uh, Uni Universal Access Gateway as a replacement to TMG and in certain circumstances that's a fair assessment but UAG is primarily designed as a remote access solution so it doesn't feature any of this gateway protection functionality, it's really purely about facilitating things like uh, remote access and uh, particularly direct access capabilities. So UAG, we don't really consider that to be a true replacement in most circumstances. Okay, so let's have a look at the Sophos UTM and let's see how it stacks up against TMG. So first of all, the Sophos UTM solution has a flexible licensing model. So it always starts out as an essential firewall. So that uh, basically offers packet filter capabilities, uh, NATing functions and basic remote access using PPTP and L2TP. Where that functionality can be augmented is through a number of different subscription services. Each of these subscription services can be purchased independently to address the needs that you might have immediately, or alternatively you can take all of the subscription services you see on the screen there as a package which we call FullGuard, and that's really designed to be a complete gateway security solution. And then on top of that, you can also add in um, endpoint subscriptions so that not only can your Sophos UTM be uh, dealing with the gateway security aspects, but it can also become a management platform for your internal um, antivirus clients and it becomes a management platform uh, and it's designed to replace um, a, a centralized management tool such as our own SEC management console. The network protection subscription um, features things like intrusion prevention but we cover the complete um, range of different operating systems and platforms with a, with a much more in-depth analysis. We also feature, as part of the network protection subscription, remote access capabilities. We have IPsec clients, SSL VPN clients. We have clients of things like um, Android devices or iOS devices. We even have a clientless VPN service, so that means users can access company resources from their own private computing platform or from any publicly available internet kiosk. Then we have the web protection subscription. That one is basically interested in web content filtering. There's 96 categories of website and uh, the UTM can filter out based on things like group memberships and times of day. So you can really tailor the, the web filter requirements to your individual organization. Not only does it feature the, the web content filtering, but then we also have antivirus scanning. In fact, the UTM features dual AV engines, so not only do we have the Sophos engine in there, but there's also the option to run a Vera at the gateway as well, which really helps out if you're already a Sophos endpoint customer and you're thinking about having a, a different AV engine running at your gateway for defense in depth. 
it doesn't cost any more to run it in two AV engines. It's uh, simply part of the subscription service. Okay, then we also have the email protection module. That one is dealing with um, issues around spam and, and phishing and also viruses on, um, on email delivery mechanisms. And it also features email encryption as well. So it's got the capability to send private messages between uh, other software UTMs and also be between uh, pre-configured mail servers. But that functionality is going to be improved greatly in version 9.2, which will be coming up early next year. You'll be able to send encrypted messages on the fly to, to any user, and it will basically be delivered as, a, uh, as an encrypted PDF with a passcode lock on there. And uh, we think this is really useful because most people will have some kind of PDF viewer available to them, or if not, they'll certainly have the uh, access to a, a free of charge PDF viewer. Okay, then we also have the web server protection subscription, and um, that one basically is acting as a reverse proxy, much like TMG, but then also it has the capabilities to act as a web application firewall. So we're drilling down into the traffic in a bit more depth, and we're looking for things like cross-site scripting and SQL injections, as well as enforcing a site map and making sure users aren't probing around into areas they're not supposed to be visiting. And we can also um, restrict access based on a reputation. So um, if a, a particular IP address is known to be a source of hacking attempts, then we can, for example, deny service to our website using that functionality. And then moving away from the gateway slightly, we have our wireless protection, and that basically turns the UTM into a wireless controller. You can deploy um, software access points to build up a, a good wireless coverage, um, and the UTM will control up to eight different wireless networks, including guest services um, with a captive portal and, uh, and a welcoming page, and also options for things like voucher or time-based access options. I don't really have time to go through the management console with you today, um, but uh, hopefully you can see on the screen there that the Surface UTM dashboard is designed to be simple to operate and easy to use. It's designed for somebody really who has a good understanding of networking fundamentals, but maybe is not a complete security expert. Uh, the UTM is very much object orientated, and that means that instead of having to remember a whole bunch of IP addresses and port numbers, you can just create objects within the UTM dashboard and then use those objects as policies. So for example, if you want to create rules around something like your mail server, once you've created the object mail server, then you're just dragging and dropping that, uh, that object into the policies as you're creating them. So it's designed to be very simple to operate. And the Office UTM also features very, very powerful reporting. Um, so you can, for example, see things like the top applications in use, top application categories, top sites by time, top users by time, top sites by traffic, and top users by traffic. So you can see where your bandwidth is going, which sites people are frequenting, and basically where users are actually spending their time. Not only that, but the reports are also customizable, so you can drill down into particular departments or particular users and really get to understand exactly how uh, those individuals or those departments are spending their time. And you can also have the UTM automatically distribute those reports. So once you've created a policy that you're, um, you're happy with and a report view that you like, you can have the UTM then automatically distribute those out on email. Um, a good couple of examples might be all of one department's browsing activity could be sent to a departmental head, and all of the sites that users tried to go to that were contrary to policy, those can be sent over to the HR department for uh, analysis. Surface UTM also features a powerful tool called Search Engine Reports, and that will basically recognize the context of a search engine and will actually report back on, on what individual users have searched for. And uh, that may seem voyeuristic at first glance, but uh, maybe for those of you in education, um, searching for things like self-harm and substance abuse are, are clearly opportunities to have uh, interventions with, uh, with pupils that uh, might make a real difference. And um, it also helps to really understand the mindset of users. So when we see things like um, how, to buy, how do I bypass web content filtering, how do I go to my PC at home, then we know that we've got a fence tester there who's basically trying to work around the policies that we've put in place. So let's compare the, the key features. So first of all, Microsoft TMG can run in Hyper-V, and if we cross-reference against that, what we have within Sophos UTM, You'll see that um, not only can we deploy it in Hyper-V, but basically any virtualization technology. So things like VMware, KVM, Citrix, Zen apps. Um, the UTM can also be deployed as a, as a software solution, so that's a full disk installation. 
Um, there's also an option to actually buy it as a hardware appliance. So we sell our own Sophos branded appliances that you could uh, run the solution on. And it's also possible to run the Sophos UTM solution out in the cloud. So rather than have um, a significant hardware deployment on your own site, it's possible to run the whole service out in the cloud and, um, uh, and, and basically allow multiple satellite sites or multiple remote users to actually filter their traffic th through that service. I mentioned that TMG has the firewall capability. Well, um, Sophos UTM also, of course, features that, but also some advanced routing capabilities and also quite an interesting country blocking capability. And that allows us to filter out um, inbound or outbound access to particular countries. Uh, and if we know, for example, that we're not doing business with, with certain countries that are known for, for being a, a, a strong source of attacks, then, then we can actually just choose to block those countries wholesale. So as I mentioned with TMG that there's the IPS capabilities but only really limited to the Microsoft platform. Cross-reference out against the Sophos UTM, there's a huge number of, um, of signatures in there, not just Microsoft platforms. But then also we also have the live protection capability as well. So that's classifying threats um, basically using hash values and using the power of the labs. That means that we can react very quickly to threats as they appear. So with the TMG, you've got the anti-spam functions. Uh, the UTM, of course, features that as well, as well as email encryption that I touched on. And users can interact with the, um, the, their own individual spam quarantine areas using a service which is actually running on the same hardware platform. So that makes uh, integration of a, a quarantining function very, very useful. And the TMG features uh, the option to deploy a second unit as redundancy. Of course, the UTM features that as well. Um, and it also features a load balancing function too. So what you can do is you can deploy multiple hardware platforms or multiple software instances and actually load share those um, to make sure that they're all earning their keep. And the software UTM also features WAN redundancy as well, which is something that TMG doesn't offer. So that allows you to bring in more than one internet connection for resiliency and load sharing purposes. Okay, we've looked at the Sophos UTM's customizable reports, and that stacks up very well against the, the somewhat basic reporting in TMG. And uh, I mentioned as well the, the remote access capabilities, so much more flexible solutions, much broader range of platforms supported, including a clientless service. We didn't touch too much on site-to-site -to -site VPNs, but uh, with TMG, you can build site-to-site -site IPsec tunnels. The Sophos UTM can, of course, do that as well. Um, as well as other technologies, and also the ability to create um, on-demand access to, to branch office locations using a, a separate piece of technology called the Sophos Red Appliance. And it's also possible to integrate the Sophos uh, UTM service into the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. So for those of you who've maybe created a small network within Amazon and, and run some of your servers out there, it's very easy to integrate that into your network using the, the VPC service. We've touched on Microsoft's uh, URL filtering. The UTM, of course, features that 96 categories, which is very slightly higher than the number of categories in TMG. But then also adding in customizable categories and local site recategorization, and also a reputation filtering service as well. So that helps to react to uh, legitimate websites being uh, compromised and, and, and malware being injected into those. The re reputation service works very quickly to, to reclassify those. Uh, the Sophos UTM also features application control as part of the web content filtering subscription. So where TMG is really just interested in, in, in IP addresses and port numbers, the, the Sophos UTM can also analyze the applications. And we can choose to block applications. In a lot of cases, we can block sub-functions of applications. And also, we can control bandwidth capabilities with applications as well. So if you have an application which is particularly important to you, then you can prioritize that and make sure it has sufficient bandwidth. Conversely, if you're uh, looking at applications that maybe aren't so important, then you can actually put thresholds on those to make sure that they don't swamp the legitimate business activity. So we touched on TMG's capabilities for anti-malware. The Sophos UTM also features the malware capabilities basically with the dual engine capability. Um, we have the ability to also inspect for malware over HTTPS transactions, and we can do that in transparent mode. So we don't necessarily have to be an explicit proxy on the network in order to scan HTTPS traffic. Um, TMG features really good integration with Active Directory, and the Sophos UTM replicates that, but there's also added flexibility. So there's also the capability um, to hook into other services like Novelli Directory. And uh, there's a transparent mode capability as well. So again, the UTM doesn't have to be an explicit proxy on the network. So on the reverse proxy side of things from, from TMG, 
as I already mentioned, the Sophos UTM features that, but also um, integrates things like server hardening, uh, URL hardening to enforce sitemaps, looking for things like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, so a lot more functionality. And just like TMG, it can be used to uh, decrypt the SSL um, transaction, basically to remove some of the load off the web server. Now, at the moment, there's one thing which TMG does have going for it, and that is um, a nice little function called the reverse proxy authentication service. So basically, when a user signs into one service um, protected by the TMG, the TMG will cache those credentials and automatically sign the user into any other resources they have access to. And um, that's a piece of technology which will be integrating into to version 9.2 of the software, which all being well should be available uh, very early next year as a free of charge upgrade uh, to existing customers. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the key things that makes uh, Sophos UTM uh, a better solution. So you can basically take your existing TMG server and turn it into a Sophos UTM with a software appliance option, but then you've got much more flexible options around uh, other virtualization technologies, um, a dedicated hardware platform or, or a cloud-based service. It's designed to be easy to customize and, and has lots of configuration options, but still maintaining an interface that's simple to operate and, and maintaining sensible workflows. The Sophos UTM also allows you to consolidate and simplify your security estate. So we can eliminate multiple servers, and we can remove other devices from the network. So the Sophos UTM does so much more, as we've seen there with things like wireless capabilities, there's the option to bring all of that functionality into the Sophos UTM. And uh, the, the Sophos UTM, of course, is a network platform for the future. So we've, we've very recently added in wireless capabilities. We have our unique red technology to connect into branch office locations. We've got endpoint capabilities and the visibility of endpoints when they're out in the field. We've also got web content filtering available to users that are out in the field. And, of course, we're striving to constantly develop and add additional functionality in. So there's a bright future and a bright roadmap for the Sophos UTM, including in the next release, scanning for things like advanced persistent threats, and, um, and also some integration with mobile um, control applications as well. So there's lots of exciting things happening with the Sophos UTM. And of course, if you cross-reference that to TMG, of course, there's no further development on there. And in fact, very soon, it won't even be supported. And of course, you'd expect somebody from Sophos to, to advocate the Sophos UTM, but it's not just us that are saying this. If you take a little look at uh, some of the third-party reviews, there's lots of forums and lots of people all looking around for a good replacement technology to TMG. And I particularly like this one, the, uh, the blog at Winsec, and they basically, they're independent analy uh, analysts. They were tasked with going to find out some kind of replacement to, to the TMG, and they decided the Sophos UTM was the, the product to go for. And they called out things like um, the ease of use through the GUI, the um, application control functions, the diverse support for multiple different VPN technologies, the level of reporting, the fact that it's easy to operate, and the fact that it's a modular solution, just amongst other things, they were very impressed. Okay, so hopefully I've um, piqued a little bit of interest uh, with yourselves, and you're now wondering, well, how do I progress the interest that I might have in Sophos UTM. Okay, so first of all, it's worth knowing that we do have a special pricing structure for uh, existing TMG customers. Online, you'll find a really good guide on how to take the policies and, and functions off your TMG and move those over to the Sophos UTM. If you want to see a little bit more about the management console, um, we run a, a WebEx every fortnight on a Friday at Sophos, and the URL's on the screen there if you want to register for that and take a little look. Um, it'll either be myself or one of my colleagues that will go through the management console from top to bottom and really show you around that if you're interested in seeing under the hood how that actually works. Of course, um, I'm more than happy also to do a bespoke WebEx, um, so um, I think it's probably best if you initially contact your account manager at Bytes and uh, they'll work with you to understand exactly what your requirements are, and uh, I'm more than happy to be involved in giving a demonstration so you can actually see the management console, and we can really tell, tailor that to your individual requirements. Of course, it's also possible to get a trial of Sophos UTM as well, so again, if you speak to your account manager at Bytes, they'll be able to sort you out with a trial of, of the Sophos UTM, so if you would prefer to test that um, at, at your own pace, at your leisure, then you're very welcome to take a look at that. And we offer trials that last for 30 days. They're fully functioned trials. And of course, because it's a virtualized 
uh, technology, then it's very easy to run up an instance and, and actually just, just tinker with that on a, on a spare server that you might have. So that pretty much wraps up the presentation that I've got. Um, I can see that we've had a couple of questions come through, so I'm going to uh, ask Helen to, to run through some of those questions if that would be possible. Um, and of course, if any questions do occur to you um, during the summary, then by all means get busy and type away and, and ask those questions in the, in the dialog box on the right-hand side, and I'll address those as quickly as I can. Um, alternatively, any, any questions do occur to you, then by all means contact your account manager at Bytes after the webinar, or my contact details are on the screen there. If you wish to contact me directly, then you're very welcome to do so. So um, if I may hand back to the colleagues at Bytes, if you uh, could have a little few questions for me, that would be very much appreciated. Yes, so um, let's just have a look. As I said, if you have got any questions, then please do pop them in the box and we'll go through them. Um, we have had one come through that asks um, about the pricing for... Um, so if Jonathan says, what's the pricing? <laughs> okay, uh, well that's a good... That's a good question, and unfortunately, it's not really a question that I can can answer uh, in a simple fashion. Basically, because we have um, two different licensing models, depending on whether you're thinking about buying a hardware solution or whether you're thinking about running it on your own hardware, either virtualized um, or um, or as a dedicated server platform. Um, there's there's immediately two different licensing models, and then of course you've also got the, um, the things like the user accounts and the, the different modules that you may be interested in running. So. Um, it's not an easy question to answer, unfortunately. I can tell you that pricing is, is certainly competitive. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's a sensible pricing structure. Um, but to actually get an exact price based on your requirements, then um, it's probably best, again, if you contact your account manager at Bytes and basically just give them some information about what your network looks like, which functions you're interested in running, and then that will help us to derive a price uh, for you. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't answer that one right now, but... Uh, of course, a, a, a very common question is, is how much does it cost? Okay, and we've had another question come through from Alex who asks, rather than block access to a site, can Sophos give a user a warning prompt message instead? Instead, Seen this with other solutions, it would be useful for sites like Dropbox. We want users mm -hmm. to access it, but want to display a message or disclaimer when they access it. Okay, well, there's good news and there's bad news. Um, the bad news is right now we don't have that functionality integrated. Um, so what we have today is basically a web content filter that will allow or block access. Um, you can allow for an override. Um, so for example, for a privileged user, you might give them the ability to override content filtering. And essentially they will get a deny page that they can then log in using their credentials. We don't typically ask for user credentials up front. It's usually cached in the background. But by asking for those credentials, we're just verifying that it is actually that user at the terminal at that exact moment. Um, and that allows the user to override. But what's coming up in 9.2, which I already mentioned is, is going to be kind of early into next year, um, that will give you an option for warning as well. So not only can you then choose to allow or block, but you can have exactly what you're asking for. And that will basically be a page that pops up and it will say, for example, you've accessed Dropbox and you know, we don't necessarily think that's a, a great idea. You should be a little bit careful about the content you put up there. And uh, users can then click through and um, either accept that or, or, you know, choose to go and do something else. Um, and uh, if it follows the way that um, the rest of the software UTM looks, and that, that deny page will be, or that warning page will be customizable, so you can put your own messages on there as and, as and how you see fit. Um, so that's a bit of technology which we're integrating pretty soon. So um, it's good to know that we're going in the right direction. Um, incidentally as well, just as a bit of a kind of advertising pitch, it's worth knowing that um, we do operate at Sophos a user forum where people can actually come up with new suggestions and it really helps us to develop the products more. So um, it, whether you're a customer or whether you're a prospect customer, any feedback that you can give us about um, the stuff that you'd like to see in the device, or maybe you think we're doing something a little bit wrong, it's possible to actually interact with the people who actually put the stuff together, and it, like I said, it really helps us to develop the software moving forwards. Um, so, yeah, as I say, it's good to know that we're going in the right direction, and, and um, by the time, realistically, you've looked at this and, and maybe got to a point where you're ready to deploy it, 9.2 will be out and we'll be able to do exactly what you're asking for. So, yeah, thanks again for the question. Okay, and um, the next question from Chris, is mobile devices management on the development roadmap for Sophos UTM? 
Okay, well, you're probably aware that Sophos, UTA, uh, sorry, Sophos as a whole already has a mobile control solution. Um, the, the first step of integration is actually coming up in version 9.2. Um, it won't be full integration of the mobile control piece, but what it will allow you to do in the first instance is push out things like wireless profiles and remote access um, profiles to devices managed by the, the SMC service. So um, that will allow kind of a simple method of, of, of um, updating those clients when, when wireless networks change and, and, and push out a remote access solution as part of the Sophos UTM. It will also allow devices that are non-compliant to be cut off. Um, so at the moment, SMC uses um, denial of email as a stick, basically, to bring people back into compliance. But if a device is deemed to be non-compliant, you can also cut off its wireless access or its VPN access um, in conjunction with the Sophos UTM. So that's the first bit of technology. That's coming up in 9.2, but it won't be January time. It'll be a little bit later on, maybe March time. It'll be in a sub-release of version 9.2. That functionality will be integrated. But the longer-term plan is to bring Sophos Mobile Control in some way, shape, or form into the Sophos UTM as an additional subscription service. So much like we've integrated the endpoint technology, SMC hopefully will be a, a, a separate subscription service that we'll add in later on. But that is on the slightly longer term roadmap. OK. Um, and we've had another question from a different Chris that says, can you confirm if this product works with Mimecast's integrated Windows authentication as TMG doesn't? Um, OK. Uh, I would. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not familiar with that technology. Um, so I think it's probably best if um, if you've got if you grab my details, Chris, then then contact me directly afterwards and I'll look into that for you. Or alternatively, if you don't have those details, if you just contact your account manager at Bytes, then we'll get that passed through the chain and we'll take a look at it. But I can't honestly answer that because I'm not familiar with that technology. Um, okay, and we've got another one here from Mark that says, this product obviously does a lot, which sometimes means not all functionality is at the same level of, of other dedicated products. We are considering WebSense. How would you compare WebSense AV slash web filtering to the Sophos solution? Okay, um, good question and one that comes up all the time. Um, you know, realistically, um, a, a, any UTM of any type is, is not going to necessarily feature every um, every aspect of a dedicated point solution. Um, but the real idea of a, a UTM is to be a viable um, solution that covers multiple different areas. Um, so sometimes there's a trade-off, but uh, the key idea of a UTM really is to, to reduce the cost of ownership and deliver a solution which is hitting all the business demands but at a, at a lower cost. And that's sort of kind of a typical stance on there. That said, our web content filtering is um, is an excellent module, and um, I have actually replaced WebSense solutions with the Sophos UTM, and users have been extremely happy with the functionality that they've been getting. WebSense, of course, is a great product, and it's been around for a you know, good number of years. Um, sometimes people consider it to be a little bit overly complicated, maybe a too high a number of categories, maybe too many options. So it very much depends on exactly what you're looking, you know, for WebSense to be able to do. Um, but if it's if it's core web content filtering based on things like Active Directory membership, um, times a day, that kind of thing, the Sophos UTM produces a, a you know, really good set of reports and really good granularity of control. And like I said, if you take the endpoint functionality as well on the UTM, then you can even enforce those policies for users out in the field as well. So uh, I'd like to think it stacks up very well. And um, like I said. I'd be more than happy to, to show you the functionality over a WebEx and uh, be interested to get your feedback to see how you think it compares. But um, yeah, we like to think that it's, um, it's, a, it's a strong competitive product to, to something like WebSets, even, as, even though that is a dedicated solution for one particular aspect of security. Okay, and a question here from Alex that says, will Sophos UTM be a good candidate for both access to internal and DMZ network? How many NICs does the hardware appliance have, slash how many networks can you connect to it? Okay, um, well that depends. If, if it's a hardware appliance, it depends on the size of the box. 
Um, every device bar our very, very smallest, which is only really suitable for about 30 users, um, has at least eight network interfaces. And you can actually hang 16 networks off that because they all have a, a secondary IP range. Um, if, you, uh, if you have VLAN technology, then, then the limits are right up to the RFC for VLANs, which I think is something like 36,000. It's a huge number. So it's very, very flexible for that. Um, as a remote access solution, it is, um, it is re replete with multiple different remote access options. So uh, most people use our SSL VPN client, which is available for Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris, um, Android, iOS. Um, so there's lots of different options there, and the on-demand services as well, using the clientless VPN service is another really strong point as well. So yeah, certainly division of individual networks and, and facilitating remote access to those are, are kind of core to the UTM. Okay, great. Thank you.